In the previous talk, uh, the girls uh, demonstrated how important is um, archive data for multilingualism research. And in my talk, I will try to show that it is very important to use uh, very different kinds of data, including archive um, data, historical, anthropological information, psycholinguistic, social linguistic, historical, social linguistic, and of course, linguistic approaches. Um, when we started working on um, multilingualism of the, of the lower Kovma region, we, had, we didn't have much information about um, this phenomenon. Uh, we just knew that in the downstream tundra of Kalima mm, there are several individuals, uh, usually of mixed origin, who reported speaking four languages apart from Russian. Chukchi, Van Yuk, and Yikut. And we knew that a lot of um, other people were, uh, could speak three languages or four languages. And they, they all claimed that the generation of their parents was even more multilingual. Um, so these are uh, the places where we first record, recorded multilingualism. Um, when I first um, encountered uh, multilingualism in Bilibin, it is western Chukotka, it was one woman who could speak Chukchi and Deven. I uh, even didn't pay much attention to that. But later when I, um, during, uh, first I studied Chukchi language in the eastern part of Chukotka, then I moved to the west and west, and I met more and more and more languages spoken apart from Chukchi there. So, and uh, in Chesky and uh, Kalimska in Yakutia, I, um, before we started our project, I met um, several people who could speak many languages, not only one, like in Bilibin. But later I understood that it is one, um, one area, one zone of multilingualism, actually. Here are the pictures of some multilingual consultants. Um, and uh, when a person uh, first met this uh, multilingual uh, woman in um, Western Chukotka, um, I realized that the com correlation of um, languages of Chukchi and Deven languages in her uh, in, uh, language use in, in her head was very different um, compared to the combination of Chukchi and Russian uh, bilingualism in the other part of Chukotka. And the same can be, can be said about Chukchi Even and Yukigir in the west, in the uh, northeastern Yakutia. And later on, I learned that it is called uh, small scale multilingualism, when the uh, languages um, spoken are not, uh, do not differ very much in terms of hierarchy. Uh, and the case of uh, Chukchi Even, Yukigir, and Yakut, spoken by one people or in other correlations like Even Yukagir and Yakut or Chukchi Even and Yakut. It is very is very interesting also because Yukut Yakut is dom a dominating language, but it is in different position than Russian. Uh, because Russian uh, the importance uh, the influence of Russian on other languages, other minority languages is studied and we know how it functions. But Yakut is also dominating but it is somewhere in the middle between the minority language and Russian. And the language shift is taking place, of course, in in this direction. So to Yakut from Chukchi Even and Yukigir, and then to Russian. Um, and when we started working, it was evident that um, we need an in interdisciplinary approach to, to that topic because um, uh, we didn't know uh, how to start, but we knew that we, of course, need to. Um, search for linguistic outcomes of multilingualism. We need to know the domains of use of different languages. That's why we need social linguistics. Uh, then um, we know that multilingualism is becoming extinct, but uh, probably there were more multilingual people. So uh, we need historical social linguistics to find out how it is, what was organized earlier. Um, then because of mixed er uh, ethnic origin of multilingual speakers, we need to s search for some historical anthropological sources to understand who really lives and lived in this region, what nationalities, or if even we can call them um, ethnic groups, or they, are, they were mixed long ago. And um, because of the different levels of proficiency um, of consultants' um, languages, uh, we need to um, 
apply some psycholinguistic approach. Uh, and we, we conducted several uh, a series of expeditions um, during these three years, um, and we tried to, um, to co collect information um, according to these um, different approaches. Um, actually, we collected interviews to uh, gather quantitative, uh, to gather qualitative data about uh, people's language repertoires, language choices, um, languages spoken, spoken in childhood with parents, uh, about people's migrational histories, social linguistics, and so on. Then um, I can, we conducted a um, um, quantitative survey to know the general situation in the region and uh, archive work that was described by the girls. We collected, collected texts, and um, this year I tried to uh, practice some um, proficiency psycholinguistic tests. Um, first of all, I would like to present some linguistic outcomes that we have found, um, and uh, to show that maybe uh, without any other kinds of information, they do not tell us much. For example, we can see that there are no, not many. Uh, uh, not many borrowings uh, from uh, Chukchi to other languages and from other languages to Chukchi. Um, because, um, but, but why did it happen? Because a lot of people in this region could speak Chukchi, Aven, and other languages. Why did not they um, influence each other? Um, of course, we can tell something. We can say that, yes, there were um, Yikut, uh, bor Russian borrowings with Yikut phonetics to Yukagur and then, and uh, that means they did not have, um, they were not much exposed to uh, Russian in the previous times before before the Soviet power, for example. We can that tell that, but we cannot say wh why the, the, this situation, the structure occurred, and uh, we did, 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 did do not know m much about Yakut uh, event interactions. What kind of borings, and oh, actually, um, what what is the reason for? For um, uh, not, not not very big uh, for a huge interaction between Van and Yukagir, and not very big interaction between Chukchi, Van Yukagir, and Chukchi and Yakut, for example. Uh, so to clarify that, we need to get information from another uh, sources, other sources. Uh, here is a um, brief uh, representation of the results of um, our quantitative study um, where um, we tried to collect all variants of language repertoires of our subjects and their parents. So I will um, show these tables briefly and then try to um, present some discussion. So these are parents uh, and you can see that something something changed. Uh, you you do not see that much of repertoires that which include Russian um, in parents' repertoires, for example. So a brief discussion of the, all that. Uh, first of all, uh, the l number of monolinguals uh, decreased. Uh, so uh, in the previous generation, um, the generation of uh, speakers' parents. Um, we have 33 monolinguals and now only three. Uh, and all of them uh, can speak Russian. So they, they are Russian monolinguals. But before, there were different situations. There were some Yakut, there were some Yakut monolinguals, Chukchi monolinguals, and Evan monolinguals. Now we do not have them. Uh, then uh, what happens with multilinguals? Uh, people who can speak three languages and more. Uh, you can see that there are 76% of uh, multilinguals now, uh, but 43% of multilinguals uh, in the parents' generation. Uh, it, uh, a bit contra con controversial to what speakers themselves sell, say about the previous situation. Uh, then, uh, if we uh, look at bilingual repertoires, we can see that um, all um, subjects' repertoires included Russian language, uh, bilingual repertoires, but uh, there were much more um, variation, uh, much more variance of bilingual repertoires at parents' uh, language sets. And only two of them included Russian. For example, you can see Ven Yikut, Yukagir and Yikut, Yukagir and Ven, bilingualism, and of course, nothing like that you can find in uh, today's bilingual repertoires. Uh, 
Russian. You could see only ru Russian and some other language. Uh, so, uh, we, we can see decrease of monolinguals, increase of multilinguals, um, and uh, introduction, introduction of Russian into repertoires. Uh, so, actually, uh, non-Russian monolinguals of the past have become bilinguals now, because they now have Russian in their set. And bilinguals of the past have become today's trilinguals, and so on, because they just added Russian to their sets of languages, in many cases. Uh, and uh, in the past, multilingualism, um, it, it means that in the past, multilingualism was more uh, small scale. So it didn't have the dominating, people uh, didn't have dominating language very often in their language repertoires. Uh, and um, uh, so, so uh, it, 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 it can partly explain why um, our subjects tended to say that earlier multilingualism was more widespread. Uh, uh, the, the uh, sorry, <laughs> vice versa. It cannot explain why the uh, the subjects tended to say that earlier multilinguals were more widespread because we see the uh, actually the number of languages uh, spoken by people was generally less, and we cannot understand uh, even after this survey what was um, was there multilingualism in the generation prior to such experiments. Uh, to know that, we need to uh, get information from, again, different, mm, different disciplines. Um, so uh, before, uh, searching, uh, before trying to search for this information in books, um, uh, we tried to uh, set up uh, the scene, so to, to make the borders of the territory which we are going to research, to make research on. Um, for that, we needed um, open-ended interviews where we collected all kinds of data, including the history of the region, for example. And uh, we um, knew that there was two villages of Nizhny Kalimsky district of Yakutia where multilingual subjects originated from. It was Kalimska and Andrushkina. Uh, before these villages were built, there were boarding schools near that villages. Near Kalimska, um, there was a Russian-based school, and near Andrushkina, there was Yakub-based school. And um, a lot of lower Kalama residents moved to Western Chukotka due to administrative rearrangement of self horse uh, reindeer herds. So we have a, a wider territory than we uh, proposed before, not just lower Kalama. Uh, lower Kalama, sorry, which is here, um, but also lower Alazia, which is Andrushkina, uh, where Andrushkina is situated. And also, uh, we know that some um, residents of Lower Kalma and Alazia now live here in the Western Chukotka. So uh, we have a rather big uh, territory, uh, territory, and now um, what we are studying is Kalma Alazia Tundra. It is better name than just Lower Kalma, and also periphery, because these people are also important, and what happens here is also important for us. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so let, let's look uh, who was the first to um, be in this territory. Actually, Yugurs are, mm, it is widely known that uh, pr probably Yugurs were the first residents of far northeast of Russia. Uh, Russians actually came in the, came in the middle of uh, 17th century, but uh, there were not many of them. Events came uh, beginning in the beginning of uh, 18th century, um, Yakuts in the, end of, in the end of 18th century, but they lived uh, not in Tanja, but uh, in the place where forests, uh, a forest ended, in the end of uh, Krailesa, it was called. So they uh, didn't occupy the whole Tanja, actually. And Chukchis were the last to came. You can see that their presence in this territory is, uh, is for a very short time, probably. That is why there are not, very m not a lot of long words from uh, Chukchi to other languages and vice versa. Uh, so we can see that um, these people, these peoples came to uh, Kalmal Tandra from different directions. A van came from uh, uh, east and west. That that what what we found out while writing article about um, uh, events and their contacts with uh, neighbors in. Um, the end of 19th century. Uh, then Chukchi came uh, from the east, Yakuts came from the south. So not only this uh, Kalama Alazia region is important, but also the periphery of the area, uh, which is um, 
uh, demonstrated in green here. So this is uh, what we were going to find more historical anthropological information to about to um, um, answer the questions which were set in the um, um, in the slide before. Uh, so this, this which were, what we were managed to get about that. Um, there are some evidence of multilingualism in this area in the end of 19th century, in the areas, in the area which was circled here. Uh, Bagaras, who was an anthropologist um, studying Chukchi, learned uh, Chukchi language via advanced speakers of Chukchi. Um, and they also could speak Russian. Chukchi couldn't. Uh, but he did that, he studied Chukchi um, somewhere here, to the uh, east from Kolyma, not in this region. Uh, to the, here, yes, here, where he did that, so to not, not here, and these are different event groups, uh, different, speaking different variants. Uh, there were labor-based contacts. Chukchi, and Deven, uh, Chukchi hired Evans and Yukagirs as reindeer herders, um, and of course, uh, Evans and Yukagirs had to speak uh, Chukchi language. There was Yakut influence because poor Evan and Yukagir clans moved to live to Yakut. Nas legs where life was easier. Then Yukagirs and Evans often married each other, but we did not know uh, w which uh, language was spoken actually by the children. Uh, then uh, there is evidence that Yukagirs and Evans were true polyglots of the Tantra by Yukagirs, but he did does not give concrete examples. Uh, we know that Yukagirs and Evans served as guides for Russians, and they had to know very often Yakut or Russian for that, of course, and they were multilingual, therefore, but there were n not many people who worked as guide there. Uh, but who are actually Yukagirs and events? Uh, were, we have evidence that two clans of events switched to Yukagir, uh, though um, uh, they remembered event clan names. And there were Yukagirs uh, to the west of Indigirka, here. Who switched to uh, uh, Yukagirs? Who switched to Evan? But they remember their Yukagir names. So who are Evans? Who are Yukagirs? We can speak only about languages. So um, a previous uh, service of um, 20th century, as girls has told, uh, they showed that there, that there were multilingual envi environment reported also on Yukagir in the end of 19th century. There is no concrete data on multilingual individuals. And in 1930, first schools appears. Uh, appeared. We know that. And children of different origins were forced to, uh, to uh, live together and to learn Yakut or Russian, depending on in which school uh, they studied. Uh, the newly made villages um, are reported by consultants to be event dominated, Andrushkina, and Chukchi dominated, uh, Kalimska. And the majority of groups, um, for example, Yukangirs and Andrushkina and events and Yukangirs and Kalimska, they acquired the and Chukchi because they lived in these villages which were built, built in the late 30s. And the hypothesis is, and probably it is the only <laughs> possible variant, that multilingualism in mass emerged after the 1930s. However, you could event bilingualism, and you could event, you could give trilingualism, could have emerged earlier. So again, we can look at, at this uh, table and uh, this Chukchi Evan Yukagir interactions. They become more evident here. So we know that there are not many, many borrowings uh, from Chukchi to Evan Yukagir and, uh, and so on because their pres Chukchi's presence uh, was not very uh, long and um, because the interaction was uh, didn't last for a long time. And um, uh, by the way, when we uh, make the, such kind of research of linguistic outcomes of multilingualism in concrete region, uh, we tend to think that um, these kind of borrowings uh, can be found only in this region because uh, there was multilingualism here. But as for, uh, as for um, uh, our situation, it is not always the case because we know that uh, Yukagir Yukiers uh, had contacts with uh, events not only in this territory where we report, uh, where Maltelings <coughs> were reported, but also here. You can see in this map that uh, to, uh, you, you have uh, purple lines there, so there was Yukagir, Yukagir. So we can expect that Yukagir borrowings will be, will be uh, not only in this event variant, but also in um, a variant variants spoken much more to the West. So it is not peculiarity of this concrete, concrete multilingualism, these borrowings. So, and you see this actually, because uh, some um, terms, some, uh, some kinship terms were borrowed from event to Yukagir, uh, from Yukagir to event, sorry, and they are not found not in the lower Kalima 
uh, event. But also in Alaiha event, which is spoken to the West, and also in Ustiana event, which is even not shown on this map. It is much more to the West. So it is not multilingualism, this multilingualism, which uh, which led to these uh, borrowings, but maybe some earlier contacts, which maybe even did not involve multilingualism. So that's why we need all these different kinds of data. And uh, so we managed to answer somehow the um, question about um, why uh, was there multilingualism in the generation prior to such experience? Uh, so we say that uh, probably not so, so it was, but not so in, so mass. And maybe there was a when uh, you could give uh, when you could give interaction and bilingualism. Uh, but we didn't answer the second question: uh, Why the open identity interview subjects tended to say that earlier multilingualism was more widespread? For that, we need to think about people's proficiency. Maybe they wanted to say that their parents were just more proficient in these languages. So, so they, um, uh, in, in our survey, we asked about all kinds of, um, of language um, competence. So even receptive, uh, receptive competence in language was checked. So if a person uh, wrote that he could just understand the language, we um, uh, put a tick that, yes, he can uh, test some acquisition of this language. But when they reported about their parents, they tended to put a tick only if they heard their parents speaking. So probably the answer is that proficiency of today's multilinguals is not um, very high. And we also need to check that. And uh, this uh, year, uh, during my um, expedition to um, Western Chukotka local Ma, I tried to practice um, one interesting method, uh, psycholinguistic experiment, where uh, we created several um, it, it was in a part of other project, but um, a project about language shift, but I decided to use this methodology for multilingualism research, which was successful. And so it was interesting to check how people um, um, can uh, compose sentences using um, pictures and several um, several words describing this picture in their language, and the same pictures were for all the were created for all the language of the of the region. So they just could um, for some languages they could make a sentence. For some um, languages they made mistakes. For some languages they just couldn't. And there were other methods which I do not have time to speak now about. So it is another um, approach, which is psycholinguistic, which is also need to be done to um, demonstrate the proficiency difference. Uh, so multilingualism is social rather than purely linguistic phenomenon. It seems to be unstable in terms of repertoires and proficiency levels. So that's why we need so um, different approaches, actually. And ethnic identities can no be not that clear as it seems to be from linguist point of view. And here, th the proposal for multilingualism research, so open-ended interview, literature research, um, bordering the center of target area, which is very important, uh, even just just spot line of the um, concrete territory that you are studying. Quick qu quantitative research, proficiency tests, linguistic research in all languages. And it can be done simultaneously or in order or everywhere. So thank you very much. Sorry for being late.
Yes, that's right. And there is also a possibility that one event variant emerged uh, uh, during the contact of event and the Yukagir tribes, and it uh, faded away because of a new wave of event migration to this territory, because there were several waves. And some people record that there were a, a kind of different events spoken, but now it is dead. So yes, you're right, there were different variants before. So it's interesting that the pattern is borrowed because, uh, as, we, as you can see in other places, pattern borrowing sometimes is not perceived as borrowing by the native speakers. So that would explain this kind of borrowing. Another explanation you mentioned that the Chukchi already came later in this area, of course, that's another explanation. But maybe also because of the, the tendency not to, to borrow. Yes, there was a big tendency not to borrow that, that's right. But there were some uh, patterns that could be just a real feature. Uh, for example, mm -hmm. uh, uh, th to call a bear um, uh, the grandfather, yes, uh, yes. And, and the wolf, uh, um, I don't remember what was the term, but, but we don't know who borrowed actually that. So it just can, for the hypothesis that should be borrowed, but in this case, we definitely cannot say who, who, what was the source. And it did not like work, that's right. They resisted. I have a very naive question. On this all the maps of Siberia when you see huge area where you think it was spoken, right? And then it was replaced by Eden. And the Indian and by Yakut also in Yana. And by Yakut. Yakut. Mm -hmm. And then um is there an ambiguous answer to the question what has been were it the speakers of Yukagir who switched to Eden, or were they killed, or were they so uh, small in numbers that they just fled to the north? Like, do you have any, is there any answer to what has happened um, socially? To other Yukagirs? I mean, when there was a territory where Yukagir was spoken, and now Eden is spoken there, what, what did happen there? Like, people who were speaking, um, uh, Yukagir married uh, Evan and their children spoke Evan, or were they killed, or did they just flee to the north? I mean, to these small patches where they are now. So, is there any answer to this? I have evidence only about event migration to the north because of Yakut uh, movements, but I we do we do not have um, concrete. I, I, but personally, I do not I have not uh, written I have not uh, written the article about Yukagir because we have Evan and Chukchi uh, uh, articles completed, but not about Yukagir. So for now, I don't have the answer. But um, I, in some cases, they really switched to Evan, <coughs> and Evan preferred to take uh, women from women from out. Outside. And if uh, a, a small event clan came to some territory, of course they preferred Yukagir uh, wives, and uh, that's why these wives uh, switched to event, of course. And then that's how the event groups enlarged. So that's one of the possibilities. Just a short question you had in your table uh, the borrowing of dog bodies as one. Uh, matter, uh, relevant yes, 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 yes. Chukchi borrowed toponyms here. I was just thinking that in reconstruction of these old language areas and migrations, uh, the uh, systematic uh, collection of toponyms is very helpful. Mm -hmm. So if you want, I don't know if you're being encountered, uh, if you're being encountered in that kind of 
work. It, it is no, no. Because I know that many linguists often don't do that, although it's quite easy, uh, and uh, and it often gives you a pretty good idea where the people came from. Uh, they have all kinds of uh, family stories and, and personal names that uh, give a hint of their origin, uh, and then uh, the the toponyms at place give you a very good idea as to what languages were spoken there prior to the present linguistic situation. So if you go there and or I would recommend, but I, I've been doing that myself and therefore I always recommend all the linguists to encounter in field work and also the work on the phone because very old people don't do that. They just take patterns and words and things like that. And then they speculate on the prehistory or the buildings are always there and it's always available in these and in these communities I'm sure it's available because they still encounter in traditional livelihoods. So Okay, thank you. Yes, Chukchi just translated Yukagir toponyms actually into Chukchi. That's interesting. Uh, and yes, it is. Uh, it is very interesting because different nations have different names uh, for the same one and the same river in this region. And it is maybe one of the topics for the for the research <laughs> for our project. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wait, wait, don't, don't, don't stand up, please. I have an organization.